Welcome back, everybody, uh, to the King of the Hill series here at the Good Studio, the first Heart of the Swarm. More StarCraft content of 2013 here, and uh, we started off with a bang uh, with BCQT versus Grubby. Game one, we've pretty much confident, Trance is confident that we fixed all our issues, that the stream should be as smooth as a baby's bum. And we'll see if we can stick to that. So we are going to be jumping into map number two now. Grubby, one win away from banking $125. One win away from facing up against Tilo in our second best of three of the day. So very excited for this one there. Predictions-wise, BC messed up. You didn't even have a prediction. I didn't make a prediction. Just so it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Uh, but as you can see, both players, Grandmaster within StarCraft II, Heart of the Swarm. And we have jumped in to Clown Kingdom. Losers pick map, so BCQT picking Cloud Kingdom. And uh, up here in the top right, we have Grubby. And of course, six time Warcraft 3 world champion. Will that happen in StarCraft 2 this year? Could be his year. He said it could be. But his opponent standing in his way, looking for a comeback here, is of course Team Empire's BCQT. And he did stay. Very much so at the Razor Academy, the Razor House, within Quackamumba, wherever that place is in California. Ran Rancho Cucamongo? That's it. Rancho Cucamonga. <laughs> he stayed with Mr. Bitter and, of course, Rotterdam, uh, and, you know, actually improved a lot there, um, from his own words. But now in Heartless Swarm, a clean slate for everybody. Clean stats, clean s slate, and... We'll see what's going to happen on Cloud Kingdom. Have you played any games on Cloud Kingdom in this matchup? Uh, in Hots, uh, it just feels quite similar. You know, I feel like this matchup, it's like Widow Mines get peppered in. The Mothership Core kind of opens up a lot of different timings. But otherwise, this matchup, I feel, didn't really change all that much. I agree. Um, one thing that I've done a lot with Terran, aside from Widow Mines, is including Hellbats into the army. Yes. Um, because if you think about the army that Protoss usually go for in the, in the mid to later stages, very, very zealot heavy. Um, so when you have a line of Hellbats at the front that do this massive amount of splash damage, they will decimate those zealots incredibly fast. And that is something we have seen from Terran players. We've seen a lot of mech as well um, from the likes of Marine King uh, and Moro Prime as well. But BCQT is the Terran player who has walled off his front door here. Hiding information oh, 101. I just, I just realized, you know why he put the pylon down last time? To prevent that. To prevent his probe from getting trapped inside. Mm -hmm. That's what it does. Did it? Or was it to, to prevent some... Oh, it no, be, yeah, no, it because be. it's yeah. almost always factory play. So yeah. blocking it out doesn't really do much. I'll yeah. check with Grubby later, but that's... That's a, that's a good shout there, good shout. Uh, we do have second guess coming down by Grubby. Uh, of course, expected once again in Heart and the Sword. Uh, something I have seen from Grubby within his plays, when he doesn't see something going on like this and he expects something to be happening, um, you know, he, he's actually gone for a lot of Stargate play. Whether it be an Oracle, whether it be a Void Ray. But the thing is with Oracle play and Stargate play in general, if you do not do anything, you are dead. It's that simple. Uh, and that's a big risk to take, but he is 1-0 ahead. He's got that comfort area. Of course, he's going to get rid of the SCV with his Stalker, just like in Winds of Liberty, before he can really make the decisions on what he's going to do. He doesn't even need to throw down tech. He's got no probe out there, so he's not looking to proxy anything. He can just go Sentry Heavy, as mentioned before. Uh, if you go Stalker straight into a second, uh, the second unit being a Sentry, you have 100 gas out pretty fast. So you can use Hallucination to scout. It is going to be a Mothership Core, and it is going to be a second Stalker. So he's not looking to scout inside the main base incredibly fast, but he's looking to put a bit of pressure on, to have a defense set up, to make sure he has enough energy saved on that Mama Core. But moving across the map with the Mama Core, the factory is going to go down. And this is something you see a lot, because not only does the Mama Core do damage itself, is it gives you vision range into the main base you can bring down, for example the Supply Depot wall. You can start to figure out what's going on a little bit easier. And that's what Grubby seems to be looking to do here. He should be expanding behind it and building sentries behind this, not teching. Um, should be the, the standard approach here. Uh, nope, he's actually throwing out a robo, so... But that's more of a safety precaution more than anything here. And I think he might be jumping towards an Immortal relatively fast. Yeah, he's got the probe in position, actually banking up enough minerals, so the next should go down very shortly. Mothership Core, a little bit exposed. This Widow Mine is once again... I would say the X Factor. He is the uh, the star of this series so far, in this uh, the way that BCQT's playing it out at least. And he has made his way all the way around here. 
And with the uh, robotics, only an immortal can make sense for me in my mind right now. Seeing Marauders, knowing that it obviously can't be a Stargate play, uh, having a tech lad down, uh, that seems to be the, the most intelligent thing. It could be an observer into a mortal, maybe a straight immortal, but this widow mine is gonna get <laughs> through. And is gonna bore. He's obviously gonna have to get an observer now. It's gonna bore right in the mirror line. Oh, oh Grubby! Oh, the probes! <laughs> That's an amazing trap there from Grubby because obviously if that gets in the mirror line, boom, 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 shaboom happens to the probes. And well, Grubby has to retreat from the natural for now, but he does have an observer. Is he gonna make that immortal? And there it is coming out with two stalkers and a sentry. And he will be able to push this back. He doesn't really want to cancel this. Obviously, it put him in a bit of an annoying position previously. Defense he may pull family. probes to uh, make sure he's doing this. Actually, what's that mumble core doing there? Recalls itself back in a bit of trouble there. 100 energy wasted there by yeah. Grubby, but of course it will be able to come back and defend it. Grubby attempts to keep this Nexus alive. Goddess Shield activated and he will push this back with the mumble core. Two sentries and an immortal. Yeah, but he doesn't know. Does he know about that Widow Mine? No, he doesn't. Boom! Goes the mumble core. And well, Widow Mines are pretty good. Very good at detonating like that. It looks like with uh, an armory just about oh. finished off, Medivac popping out, we will be seeing the hell the hell bats. Welcome to hell, probes. Yeah. As uh, well, the hell bats going to be making its way across here, and well, the hell bats at least they are now morphed, and Grubby has no idea. And there they go. There's the ignite afterburners on the Medivac speed increase. Oh, the Ooh. observer! Ah, oh, Grubby does see it just, just about. He doesn't know what's in there though. He doesn't know what's in there, but he knows at least he's uh, under a bit of threat. He is vulnerable, and he does follow that away. Pokes out here, but his units are out in the middle of the open. Uh, in the open here, great double force field. Probably only needed one, but at least he gets the units. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh! It's time for some roasting. Right, here we go. Here we go. Come on, get in that mirror line. Where's the speed boost? boost? There it is. And Grubby now knows it's coming immediately and tries to get back. And oh, he loses one probe. They're all very, very low there. And he doesn't lose too many yet. A good defense. Good pull by Grubby. Remember, the Hellbats are freaking slow. So when you drop them, you have to run, 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 run. But uh, of course, the speed boost does help the probes or helps the uh, Hellbats get into position. But. Yeah, I mean, you, you can really see the difference that, you know, a couple people came out and said, hey, only fitting two in here isn't going to make a huge difference. Well, if there were four in there... He would have got a lot. You just suicide them in and kill a ton, right? So Yeah, and uh, behind this is, is double forge down. We actually see, if, if you look here, we're playing mech, I think, here. Yeah, um, no, he went for the... For yeah, the he's, he's, he hasn't got the factories down yet, but he's got all four gases. Second he's got factory. plus one attack. Yep. Uh, natural transition from Hellbat play, because you obviously need the armory to build the Hellbats, and might as well get plus one, and looks like we are going to have a mech play from BCQT. Very excited to see this come out, and double drops the second one, two Hellbats again, and he's going to get into the mineral line. This time, Grubby doesn't pull as fast, and the sentry goes die, die, bye. And a couple of probes do the same, and are we going to have the drop in the main base? It is being eagle-eyed by Grubby. He's stalking that down. How many probes were killed in that exchange there? Looks like a grand total of uh, only well, six, so really not uh, not too many. Considering he... Oh, look at this. Grubby actually doing a bit of harassment of his own here with the warp prison. Does get in there. No, uh, a bit of damage dealt. A couple of SCVs killed, but trading blows as he should be able to defend that relatively easily from here. But if you think about the, the natural, you know, the tech path of Visa QT, this is all aligned together, so he's not losing anything by attempting this. He only gains. He's not going out of his way to do this drop here. So this is absolutely... Because at the end of the day, it's just two Hellions yep. and an armory that's upgrading his, his army. Uh, uh, the armory that's upgrading his army anyway. So it makes perfect sense. He may try double medivac for drop here, and he I is going to... He oh. can even actually engage these units if he wanted to not go for probes. So... Uh... Grubby's got to be very, very careful here. Oh, and here we come down. He's got all four now, and he does get a lot of probes killed, and he will have to pick up here. And, uh, well, he does have speed boosts in. Five, four, three, drawn out seconds, two, <laughs> <laughs> one, and he does drop down. God, missed force field. Uh-oh. He has got the aftermath burners, though, and he could easily go to the natural. He's just going to escape, and great harassment here from Beast of QT, really keeping Grubby under wraps. Widow Mine says goodbye, Zealot. As that zealot got popped, got shot in the head. And this is uh, quite a good game here. Remember, both of these players are playing a lot of Heart of the Swarm. Grubby's fully transitioned, I suppose. And likewise, yep. he's QT for a long time. So, this is two players. Uh, the, the top half of Grandmasters, for sure. 
displaying Terran vs Protoss for you, and it's looking pretty good. So, um, in, in terms of uh, BCQT, he has a third command center, he has plus two on the way, he's about to take it, he has a Ghost Academy coming down to get rid of the shields on the Immortals and the rest of the units. Um, we'll see if he's going to aim, because there's two different styles to play from BCQT's stance. He either goes for a plus two timing, or he just waits until he's maxed out and then fights. Yeah, I, I mean, potentially, and I think Cloud Kingdom would be a great map for it, you could just turtle and yeah. then go into Sky Terran. And a lot of people have come out and said that Endgame Sky Terran, backed up by Widow Mines, is actually yeah. completely untouchable. The one thing that pushes him away from that is that he doesn't have a second, second armor. He's armor, not yes. upgrading his... Because uh, in, in Heart of the Swarm is that uh, when you upgrade your armor for your vehicles, it also upgrades your ship. So it's all in one. It's a, it's a package deal here, and it makes the transitions in late game a lot easier. Um, for example, if you're, you're teching late to Vikings for, for Colossus, you already have armor. If you're teching late for Broodlords, you already have armor. So it makes things a lot easier, and you don't just get wiped out. For example, Colossus late switch, they already have their upgrades. Broodlords throughout the game are gaining upgrades as well, so uh, it does help out a lot with these transitions. But for now, the game has slowed down. Grubby has 2-2 two, about two a complete, has Storm on the way. Uh, has Grubby identified that he's playing against Met, though, is the question that I want to know. Yeah, I think he should know because, I mean, he didn't see the additional factories, but he did see he's, siege tanks. And he's seen a lot of command centers in his vision. Yeah. There's like four command centers he's seen or something. So that's a big mineral dump, um, which obviously Mech needs to be doing. So I suppose he has identified what's going on. And it looks like we are going to have double drops again in the, in the right. Down south. There we go. And this is going to observer. attempt to get in the middle. Grubby does have an observer in position. He has units there too. Well, they're not. Well, actually, with the high templar there and feedbacks, there's no. There's no bio. Oh, both the medevac. There's no totally bio repair. Oh, oh, these are oh, done. oh, oh! Grubby gets one, but he doesn't get the second. But he already has units there. It's trapped. It's trapped. Goodbye. You are going to die eventually, or at least do nothing all game. And well, that's the uh, the downside of hellback drops when you play mech. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it's really not. Uh... It's not a big loss, though, to just sit there and threaten that, because you do have to at least keep one Templar, because yeah. one cannon, not enough. it's not enough. Not enough. But we are having uh, a bit of movement out here by BCQT. Dark Shrine down as well, and he has got plus two. He's not researching plus yeah, three no yet, plus but three. he's definitely playing late game. He's got a new command center coming down. He's got, you know, Ghost nowhere near ready. He's playing for the late game. So we're going to see BCQT go for the late stages, take a fourth, play it slow, while harassing consistently. That is the key that a lot of players play Met miss out. You have to, have to, have to harass, which is what he's attempting with drops. He's Hellions. Uh, these Hellions aren't going to get anything. A force on the right will prevent them from going down if he does try to break through, but he doesn't even need to. And, well... He's not going to attempt that anytime soon, I don't think. Ready? Scan goes down inside the main it's base, reveals the a mass amount of gateways, the robotics facility still in use. Widowmine does blow up a couple of those zealots, and they don't get too far. But as you said, starport transition coming in, a lot of command centers coming in. Uh, double armory or second armory should be coming down soon, I guess. Um, yeah, the we'll lack see. of second armory is what I find uh, quite weird, and he really does need to get that. Yeah, seventh and eighth geyser because those are what's really going to be able to fuel the the army of Beast of Cutie. Yes, definitely because he's got the army to protect it. He is losing a bit of supply running around the map with Hellions, but this is what they're there to do. And he is wearing Grubby down. But Grubby does have three three almost done. Zealot charge in the way and the Stargate coming down. So Grubby against this solid defensive mech will absolutely be looking towards Tempest here. Um, and probably mix in a couple of units like that because, oh, actually, really nice time warp there by the Mother Core, the Mothership Core, slowing down those Hinds and finishing it off. And it looks like these, or well, at least that warp prison has too high temper on it, looking for a mineral line, or at least warp some zealots out first, then move. But Viking saw it, or at least BCQT saw it, and he is going to go down there. And that's an expensive uh, blow if he loses that. But he, well, I guess he maybe didn't see it then. But either way, Grubby does have 3 3. He's a. Uh, 160 supply, so he's not really looking for a fight here. I think it's maybe a bad decision to fight against this army. And the ghost cloak up. A couple of shots to go down. Hallucinated Phoenix has been morphed. And we do have a... Uh, well, nothing really. We don't have anything. No, no that not, not is making its line. move though. Oh, oh it's waiting. Good storms by Grubby. Gets the SCV line. Double great storms. Warp Prism shall die in return. 
But I'm a little bit scared about this transition. Battlecruiser's coming down. No fleet beacon yet for Grubby, if I'm not mistaken. I don't think he's thrown it down yet, but he does yeah, have four bases. There it is. So there's a fleet beacon coming. We will start to see probably more Stargates coming down. He's only got one. He's got four bases. Can easily take a fifth very shortly. And he needs to start to get ready to fight late game now. So we're going to have late game. Terran versus Protoss. No second armory. No ship upgrades at all. That's surprising, as mentioned earlier. Um, Hellions, though. Ooh. They don't know about that top nope. left base. If only they did. If only they did. I mean, he's going to be very confident when he runs by here and sees no probes mining. He must be thinking he's in a great spot. I mean, when you're mecking, you get your fourth up before your opponent's fourth. Uh, but does he? Good. Does he think that there's no fourth? Or does he think it's somewhere else? Yeah, That's I mean, the question. The other... He needs to be either, you know, eagerly looking for that because that is a big game changer. Because that's the difference between sitting back passively and moving out at the right time. N you know, knowing how many uh, bases your opponent's on. And we'll see if any uh, scouting comes out from Beast of QT. But we do have the Tempest entering the field here. Only one Starport still. Uh, a little bit surprising that he is kept on one Stargate, but I think with the new gases being brought in, he will start to add more and we do have the second army finally coming in grubby looking to burst through here and this does look relatively weak even though there are two tanks there the stalkers blink forward one two and three bcqt with his entire army right. on the left flank at the nine o'clock position has to move forward and grubby just destroys a base and that was really intelligent play there from grubby spotting analyzing figuring out probably not good jumping into that storm but it probably only just brings the shields down but he found a weak point and he broke yeah, I, I mean, a beautiful attack because with the Mothership Core, he could have just recalled all that if he needed to. If he moved in and saw, oh, Grubby or uh, BCQ repositioned, everything's there, you can just recall. That's right. And, well, we're going to see how Empire BCQT deals with Tempest. The additional Starports are now coming in. Blur, not the best, best blink that time. It's probably not going to continue through here, especially with all those EMPs. He does lose a lot more. And that was a lot less successful than the first one. And he does throw that time warp though, just before the Mothership Core dies. But here come the additional starports. Plus one on its way, plus two shields. Tempest coming out, we're going to have more and more Tempest being built. And we are going to take this to the later stages. And I'm personally quite happy about that. We do have another Helling run by. Beta QT though has still not found that base in the top left. And that is hurting him a lot. Because he could run Hellions in there. Eight Hellions? Yeah, 800 Mirrors. Get in there, do some damage. Because he needs to stop Grubby from mining off these bases on five bases versus four gives him a great upper edge and he has found this base don't know if he got any kills there or not no i don't think he dropped just poked around saw it and actually yeah. it just veered off so battle cruisers ravens versus tempest high templar four dts turret is there with that tank beast qt not really uh, aware of this transition but these dts are going to make their way through no widow mine wall no wall complete turrets widow mines tanks these dts not getting in there that's for sure that is for sure. These are going to go down, I think. You can kill that turret, but he will get a shot. There is another turret, which will give vision. And a scan as well. And he's going to attempt to bring this down. A couple of tank volleys. But at the same time, Grubby is moving down this left-hand side. Great harassment from Grubby, though. Because he's splitting BCQT's forces in two areas. That's how to weaken mech. If it's in two places at once, it can't be all strong in one position. And that's what Grubby's done. He, he's pulled units to the right. He's pulled units to the left. But now he faces the battle cruisers, and he's not ready for the battle cruisers. The tempests are there, but so are the Vikings. And this battle cruiser, battle cruiser, you know, text which is really caught cool, Grubby. I've got here. I think he's like, what the hell? How? What? How? Why? And that is really good. And this is really good for for Beastie. Yeah, it's the Terran army, man. And of course, he still only has just the plus one attack for his air, so it's not yeah. like three three BCs are very very different than one zero. -oh. Yeah, so, uh, and now we're going to have air versus air, which is going to be a lot of fun. Now both players have identified exactly what's going on. The Tempest has been revealed, the Battle Cruiser has been revealed, and now it's going to be a lot more about... Sp oh god, those two Archons are stuck. Oh, and wow. if, he, if he kills the Pylon, obviously the cannons go down, so he's going to have to destroy the cannon. Uh, but yeah, both players have identified their playing air versus air. It's going to be a lot about splash damage for Grubby, and likewise for BCQT. Because when you play a clumped up, yes, you can build the best army possible, but the edge in the fights is going to be Storm, Archons, against the Vikings, for example. It's going to be the Hunter Seeker missiles versus the, the majority of the army. So it's going to be very, very important to utilize splash damage here. I don't think he can reach, unfortunately. I think Grubby at least attempted it. Uh, I'm not going to go down, oh. though. Oh, we did get it. Okay, he can get it. Goodbye. And it probably just a waste of supply there for BCQT anyway, so good he's gone down. Another harassment technique here from Grubby. And the Wooder Mines have been used. The DT gets in, but it will not survive. Two Zealots are going to go down as well. Does he have Drilling Claws? Because I have not seen it been researched this game. 
Uh, no, he does not. No, and I think that may be a mistake at this stage of the game. They refresh faster, they borrow faster, and uh, it obviously makes them a lot stronger. Um, anyway, we go back to uh, looking at this map. Beast Cutie did find the top left. And he probably thought to himself, crap, um, as that's been um, there a long time. Complete. And he does have a nuke. And he's looking for the perfect position. He goes down, he will get spotted, but he will survive. But of course, what's he doing? Actually, looking for a good opportunity. And he is going to nuke it, destroying the high tempo on a couple of those cannons. And look at that on the mini map. Look how easy. Adabisa, <laughs> your job is easy. Well, that ghost job <laughs> is not. As he uh, gets picked off relatively easily there. But this has turned into a really good long game. Relatively passive. How to make their way through? And, well, they rose a couple probes. Not the most game-changing thing at this stage. Probably probably still at 60-ish probes, 65 compared to 55, but of course we've got mules, so it's fine. But that army from Terran is scary. Am I, am I wrong? I'm that army on, is uh, pretty terrifying. I... Jumping jacks from the Vikings as they squat up and down. Uh, getting ready for this. And Tempest, do you, do you think Tempest alone is the right composition here for Grubby? Do you I, think that he should be splashing Void Rays with their damage versus armor, their, their new ability? Yeah, I, I feel like Void Rays were going well with this. Of course, they did get increased to 4 supply, and Tempest only being 4 supply actually might make that endgame composition better, but I think the... Yeah. Look how many battle cruisers have got high energy against the feedback. And the Ravens. High Temple are going to be very important here. Grubby, great use of the uh, the range. The, what range is it? We looked at it. Is it 14? What, the 15? Tempest? Yeah, 15. Uh, it's 13, isn't it? Oh, yeah, it's 15. 15, 15. and there's a big fight coming down. Storms, feedbacks, the galore. But the battle cruisers remain strong here. They don't have their upgrades. 2-2 two, two just now finishing. But BCQT holds strong. And all of a sudden, these Tempests are left naked. The Vikings take them down and... Well, at the end of the day, the, the battle cruisers live. They have so many hit points, like 400 hit points. It is very difficult to bring them down with all of their armor upgrades making that better. Remember, point defense drones affect stalkers, they affect tempest. That changes a lot. So not only the hunter seeker missile is important in that exchange, the point defense drone. And now, BCQT without detection. I mean, for Grubby without detection, he does spot it though, and he gets out. Oh, the nick of time loses about four probes and damages the high templar. But Grubby has to figure out how is he going to beat that army if they get repaired back up with 2-2 two, two upgrades, with again the Ravens banking their energy. This is, as you said, the problem that Protoss players are having to deal with in the later stages. Yes, they've got a long and a drawn out mid to late stages where they're very strong. But in the later, later, later stages of the game, we saw, just saw the strength of the Battle Cruisers and they were absolutely fantastic. Yeah, I mean, I, I gotta say, I'm predicting this is that something that Grubby just doesn't have that much experience. So right now, all yeah. we see him doing is making more Tempest and actually making seven probes at once too, which is not something you often see. But he, he knows he needs to just have enough stuff to just keep throwing things at his opponent. Yeah, well, BCQT's found this base in the bottom right. Grubby's got a good income though, surely. I mean, he's got the top left and... He's, he's got more income than his opponent, but BCQT, as we just saw, Hallucination, about to take the old fourth base, I suppose you could say, the 6 o'clock expansion. That's going to be good for BCQT, but these Hellions are making their way to the top left. Hello, cannons are not going to be good enough here, and down goes Grubby's probes, and he's probably just dropped 15 probes right there. Uh, probably more as well, as the ones in Gas do die, but there's to the switch over to Void Rays for Grubby, so he's going to move it up. Remember, the Void Rays now have the uh, the uh, the increased damage versus armored. It goes up to uh, 20 damage for six seconds. I think it's called the pr uh, the prismatic, prismatic alignment. Something, alignment. Ah. alignment. Alignment. Uh, alignment. So we're going to be seeing the Void Rays being used for that for sure, especially against the Battle Cruise. It's going to be very very strong. And the battle cruisers are healed, I suppose, by now. Nuke going down once again. But if BCQT claims that six o'clock base, he's already got a lot of money. Because at this stage, battle cruisers are so cost efficient. They don't die. You keep them alive forever, so he's able to just save money. Yeah, Grubby continuing just kind of counterattack, pick away. Uh, you'll see it. no no guys actually mining gas here. It's what you want. Just limit the Terran's gas yeah. income because BCs they're just so expensive. Oh, he's got, to, he's got to stay away from that army with those Vikings, to be honest. And the battle cruisers do come in, and obviously they do that. Are they at 3 3? I don't think he ever researched 3 3. I think he stayed no, at 2 2. 2 2. Good feedback going down by uh, Grubby as 
I don't think he's ready to fight yet. It's just a little bit of harassment saying, right, I'm still around. Uh, oh, great position here by useless tanks at this stage of the game. Yep. Remember, it's air versus air. These tanks are rendered useless, so great use of them there. But it looks like BCQT is fluffing out a little bit, fluffing those feathers, getting ready to move. And, well, here comes the fight. These Arkhamos need to get in there to do damage to the Vikings. They don't get what's needed. Point defense drones coming down to stop the Tempest doing anything here. And BCQT holds strong and grubby. Push back once again, and the fleet is here. Total Biscuit would be proud with this army as it moves forward. And Grubby uses feedback, but it's not doing as much damage as he wants at this moment. And the, and the battle cruisers stay strong. The Tempest exposed, and in combination with Vikings point defense drones, this is becoming very difficult here. So Hunter can miss out coming down as well. And well, Grubby now has to face this head up. There's nowhere to run. There's nowhere to hide. Fight it right here. And I don't think he. Can he's dropping supply a lot and the battle cruisers remain strong. Seven battle cruisers. A lot of stalk is actually Ooh. coming in. And I think he might be able to hold it. I think he's gonna hold it here. I, I think it just works out he's got a critical mass of Tempest and without PDD, you, I, it seems like you really, really yeah. need PDD. PDD because they attack so slow and hit so hard, it hard counters. And BCQT's been on, you know, four bases that are mined out. He's got no bank now because he's had to rebuild that army and he's down to one of six supply and Grubby did it then, I, and I really didn't think he'd do it, but as you said, no point defense drones, and Tempest are now more useful. As... Does have to be careful though, he is down to only uh, 50 or so probes, and harassment is continuing all over the place, actually even brought some battle cruisers up here, but yeah, bringing them back very smart, because he can't bleed units, he needs to, once again, hit a critical mass. Yeah, that's absolutely true for this stage, and Grubby's preventing that all-important base from being mined. That was the base for BCQ to remain in this game, and without that, he's probably got zero income. Uh, uh, very, very low, dropping off per minute now as there's only a couple of mineral fields left. And that's it. So without that base there, he cannot stay in this game. So somehow, some way, he needs that 6 o'clock base. It's as simple as that. But Grubby's obviously not going to give it to him. Grubby's expanded all down the right hand side, up to the top left. And Grubby is zoning in on our first best of three win here. He's leading 1-0. He's winning this game at this point. Until we see BCQT do something about it. How many battle crews he's got? He's got three. Ah, it's not going to be enough now. The... Tempests, the storm, the feedbacks, the stalkers. And I think the real deciding factor of this game was the the way that Grubby expanded like a zerg, spread across everywhere and everywhere because he needed it. He needs the money. He's probably spent more money than BCQT to bring down the battle cruisers. Uh, as we can see there, uh, there's a lot of units been uh, you know a lot of money been spent, a lot of units been destroyed. But Grubby now looking for the final blow here, and what a great game to play. It's Pretty much all the new hotness on There's a couple obviously left out here and there, but here comes the final engagement. Storms go down on the SUVs, which are immediately repairing everything. Vikings trying to do some damage, but they get shut down by Stalkers and Storm. And the Tempest left remaining. G, G, and Beastie QT. Unfortunately, falls down, but Grubby takes our first best of three win, goes 2 0, and we'll be playing against TLO. <laughs> As my uh, excitement there spread my mic out. Yeah, so going up against TLO, so, uh, you know, what do you think about that? I think it's a great series. Yeah, no, yeah, I mean, two, two zero. just to go back to what we were kind of trying to design this show as, uh, we wanted to make sure we had players who were playing a lot of HOTS, and so both those games you really saw kind of where the metagame is at right now, uh, just the end game composition of Terran there, and of course Widowmine openings, all that jazz, so I'm Pretty satisfied. Cool. Pretty cool, and now it's time for me uh, to see my favorite matchup at the moment in Heart of the Swarm, it is Pros vs Zerg. Uh, Grubby. We'll be going over uh, to fight against TLO uh, in our next map. So that's going to be a good series. Uh, any predictions for that one too? How about you predict this time? Because I was Okay, wrong. I'll predict it. I'll predict it. Uh, I reckon... I've seen Grubby's process of Zig. I'm going to go... It's going to be very close. Because I've seen TLO's uh, Zig versus Protoss too. And I'm going to go with a... Uh, just give me a second. Grubby's really good, but I reckon it's going to happen that Tilo's going to throw in the king. 2-1. 2-1 Grubby victory coming up against uh, against Tilo. I mean, 2-1 victory for Tilo coming up against Grubby. Yeah, 2-1. Come on, what are you? No, no, we'll just see. We'll leave this one as we'll your prediction. We'll leave it as that. We'll leave it when So uh, we will right. be back a uh, little quick break here while we round up Tilo, and then uh, stay tuned.